Good morning, everyone. Uh, can you all hear me? Um, unfortunately, you can't really read um, the case history on the left, um, which is, which is, bit, which is uh, rather not uh, according to plan, so I'll probably have to um, talk about it. Um, this lady here, um, basically, last year was given two months to live. Um, she was diagnosed stage four um, breast cancer which had metastasized to the liver. Um, and basically, um, in the end, it says, I don't know if the doctors among you will know what this means. She was told an EF schedule, uh, it is, it's EF schedule, it was uh, treatment and chemo, palliative chemo. Um, well, basically, this person, is, her name is Joanna Spinks, and that is me. <laughs> um, so rumours of my demise are greatly exaggerated, <laughs> because as you can see, I'm here today, I'm talking to you. Um, this was done in Belgium, um, because it was Dr. Jan Houseby, who apparently is one of the best oncologists in the world, um, who gave this prognosis. Um, also on this um, report, it, it, it talks about my parents. Both my parents died of cancer. My father died in the late 70s of, of lung cancer, and my mother died uh, late 80s of breast cancer. Um, and sort of the, the 30 years between my father dying and my own prognosis, um, 30 years, I couldn't believe that there hadn't been any change in, any, in the treatment other than the treatment my father was given, which was radiation, um, chemo, um, and death. And both of my parents it took two years to die with this treatment. And anyone that's seen anyone on this treatment or had a close loved one on this treatment can would know how awful that treatment is, and it's very heroic, and they, they didn't have much quality of life in the two years where they were on the treatment. Um, so I was determined not to have chemo, <laughs> if it ever happened to me, which it did, unfortunately. Um, so I, I looked at alternative therapies, and I spoke to Dr. Houseby about alternative therapies, and he basically said there aren't any. He said, take chemo. Um, he said, I only had a very small window to take chemo anyway, and he said, because he didn't think my liver would take it. He said, the abnormalities, when the liver was so bad that chemo wouldn't probably work. Um, and he's put palliative there as well. Um, so I so looked at other treatments, and I was very fortunate to have a friend in Guernsey who um, put me on to GCMAF and said, um, you know, look it up on the internet, see what you think, which I did. And it made sense to me that, that GCMAF um, was using your immune system, that instead of poisoning your immune system, poisoning your body, and your cancer and the rest of your organs, it was actually working, getting your immune system to work for you. It seemed logical. Um, so against the advice of the doctors and all my family, a lot of pressure from my family, um, I, I decided to take GCMAF and not chemo. And um, I then had a last holiday in October with all my family. I had a last Christmas. <laughs> um, we keep having last celebrations. I'm now eight months um, uh, still here. Um, nothing seems to be happening cancer-wise. I, I had have had tests, um, and what the most significant thing was in the eight weeks that I was on GC Math. Um, I'm on it still, but on the, in the eight weeks, of the first eight weeks that I took GC Math, my blood um, test, which showed an enzyme in the liver, I mean, doctors will understand this, I don't really understand this, there's a level of liver function where it shows an enzyme, um, which was really high. My first blood test, which was 106, had come down in the eight weeks on GC Math, it came down to 67, then it came down to 47. Apparently, it should be uh, in a normal person, 25. Um, and um, basically, mine, it has been going down. And, you know, basically, now I don't seem to have any symptoms of cancer. I'm perfectly well um, and fit. And, um, and so, I feel very lucky to be alive and very lucky to have discovered GC Math to be talking to you today. Thank you very much. Thank you for your time.